It's right here. Is cyanobacterium mixed with other germ, all different kinds of germs, including like diatoms and algae. Everything that is the future of energy in America. And guess where I got it from? My very own tap water that I bathe and drink in. And it is a very infectious and it poisoned me several times. And this was growing in my sink where I was dumping my coffee grounds and tiny amounts of food scraps over a big flat sink uh, made of stainless steel and for a couple of weeks there would be a little bit of food in the bottom of the sink or some water tiny amounts of water standing in it and it would grow in a big thick sheet of brown cyanobacterium and algae and diatoms and whatever else and this is what I collected it grew in a sheet and CDC warns about this being very infectious, and it definitely is. So, um, the water, tap water in Batesville, Indiana is very infectious. And this is the product. But I also collected a pure sample of water from the tap. And you can see here that there, there it, I put put a pure sample and instantly sealed it with sucrose crystals to grow the germs. Um, so, the United States probably has infectious tap water and it will eat your skin, it will infect you, it may even have botulism in it. Um, but it's basically sewer water. At least it is here in Batesville. I, I don't know about the entire United States, but I'd say they probably use a similar process, which is usually a sand filter. And they try to apply chlorine to it to try to kill organisms, but I'm sorry, it doesn't work. Chlorine, the chlorine levels in water does not kill any of the germs, really. Uh, as you can see, these floaters in here are growing, and there was no floaters in this about three or four days ago five days ago so it's it's obviously growing and it's probably not so much from air it could be but i highly doubt it because within one or two days it started showing slime signs and basically uh it, 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 the, the physical geometrical time frame that this is to, to the growing pattern is that the water is highly infectious and the, the, the previous test tube that I showed you is, is a good reason why also but the, the two pieces of evidence basically means that our water is infectious so basically we need to uh, our air is infectious too, by the way. Dust can, in fact, um, be a big problem in sampling and even your health. D bacteria and all sorts of germs can ride on dust particles. So that's another thing. Anything in the air, in the environment, or in the water, or in the food can potentially be a health hazard. Or even cause death. Uh, botulism. I, I, it may even have botulism in it. I think I may have been infected with also potentially botulism. But um, it's basically sewer water. It, it's not highly filtered water. The sand filters and the different types of filtration that they might be using is is leaky. It doesn't actually do very good. So... It's not good water. But um, in the end, um, you might want to question that. But that is these. These two containers are probably the future of energy. Because of cyanobacterium, brown, brown cyanobacterium, and algae 
both may also produce methane. I know bacteria does. And I'm pretty sure that even botulinum will produce methane. Multiple species of bacteria produce methane. Methane is one of the most viable options for energy. It is the most easily created and most sustainable way to, to create energy. It's, it's almost necessary for every process that we live by. Even though it's a greenhouse gas and that the, it produces carbon dioxide, that is actually probably worth it if we can con use the methane to con control the absorption uh, reabsorption of uh, CO2 in the air because we're, we're also learning how to pull CO2 out of the environment. So if we keep a steady st system and the environment doesn't get overly polluted with CO2, then CO2 is not the problem for our weather patterns or anything like that it could be other problems in our in our um, energetic system that cause these weather weather patterns like the sun or the magnetic field or just outer space energy that flies through the atmosphere around the, uh from black holes and things like that things from outer space so like basically you know, and also the sun can fluctuate, and there's just a lot that can happen, and, you know, temperature changes, uh, just slight degree in change in temperature can really affect our world. I mean, 20, if we increase in 20 degrees in the entire world, we will all die. But, like, basically, if we cool down 20 degrees, we could all die. So, um, there's been some recent geomagnetic storming, and, um, it's, I think it may have caused the, the, uh, a very significant temperature drop here this winter in 2022 on, around December 25th. So, um, but I'm not certain of that, so, um, but this is the future of man's energy. Uh, any bacteria or, or germ that can, uh, any biological creature that can create methane or hydrogen is a potential for fuel. There may be other fuels that you can produce as well. Um, genetic engineering is quite uh, a feature and you can probably get some weird things created just from biologics. Thanks.